So one year ago, I switched from Sony to Fuji. And ever since then, I've honestly become a bit of a Fuji fanboy. But has my experience with Fuji this year been all that it's cracked up to be? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share my likes and dislikes since switching from Sony one year ago. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. Today I wanna to talk about my experience switching to Fuji after having used it for an entire year professionally and obviously for YouTube. But really quick, if you already haven't, be sure to hit that subscribe button as I'm gonna be doing more camera related gear content just like this in some upcoming videos. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this experience using Fuji after one year. Okay, so the first camera I switched to after leaving Sony was this. This is the Fuji X-T4. And it was the camera that really started it all off. And for the most part, I really love its timeless design. It looks really, really phenomenal actually. And this video probably doesn't know justice. If you ever get a chance to feel an X-T4 in hand, you'll probably fall in love with it. It's built incredibly well. However, there are some things that I don't like about the X-T4. So I wanna talk about my dislikes since using Fuji first, since I don't wanna leave you with a bad taste in your mouth after this video is over. So first things first, I don't like the grip on the Fujis, and this goes for the X-T3 and X-T4 combined. There barely is any grip on this camera. You'll notice I have this little plate at the bottom of here, and this plate actually works great for my tripod, but it just lacked having any sort of grip ability. And that was one of my biggest bummers. Somebody who does real estate photography and street photography, I need to have a grip when I'm doing things handheld. So I had no choice but to add this to the camera. So if there's one thing I would love to see be improved on future versions of the X-T line is a better grip. The second thing that I dislike about this camera, and this goes again for the X-T3 and X-T4, is the power button. So often I found myself accidentally turning the power button on in transit. Whether it be in my bag or just me accidentally putting it in the bag and turning it on, the camera would power itself on. And when it would power itself on, I wouldn't know until I got to my next location. Luckily enough, I've always traveled with additional batteries, so I've never had it where it left me in a bad situation, but it is something worth noting that this power button is really easy to turn on and off. Now, the last thing sort of talks about the shutter button. You'll notice I have this little red dot on the shutter button. You can customize Fuji shutter buttons on the X-T3 and X-T4 to whatever you want it to be. You can use any type of bling you want. Now, the problem with these style of shutter buttons is I have lost these red dots probably, I've probably gone through about 10 or 11 of them throughout the year, just because you throw them in and out of your bag and they loosen up. Now maybe using some Loctite or something would probably prevent that, although I probably wouldn't really recommend using any liquid on a camera, but yeah. Anyways, I've lost a few of these shutter buttons and it's a bit annoying. I wish Fuji would have a better option, maybe include their own or say, hey, you know, we, we'll, uh, we'll give you the red button inside and it's not gonna, come loose after so many uses, but it's something you're gonna wanna keep checking. Um, minor gripe, but it's just something worth noting about. The last thing I wanna talk about is the autofocus on the X-T4. The X-T4 autofocus is good, but it's not great. So many times when filming, especially filming in F-Log, I noticed that the autofocus, especially when vlogging, was drifting a little bit. And sometimes it would take a little while before it would actually lock onto myself, my face, so the face tracking is something that I can't really trust. Oftentimes I would have to put the camera into what we call range limiter, which basically controls how far the camera can focus behind you, which is great, but then if you wanted to shoot something else, you would have to switch it out of range limiter to be able to lock on to another target. A bit annoying, but once you start using it for a little bit, you sort of know, you know, know how and when you should be using range limiter and you sort of know when the face tracking is going to work and when it won't work. But for the most part, I typically 
just put it on range limiter and that's how I do a lot of my vlogging. But I stopped vlogging with the X-T4 because it is so heavy. Now for real estate photography, I switched over to the 10 to 24 millimeter Fuji WR lens. And you know what? This is a great lens. Using the autofocus with Fuji for real estate photography sometimes is hit or miss. Now I use single point autofocus which basically allows me to target something in a house and make that my single point where I'm focusing. Now what I did notice in houses where the walls are either white or gray, there's not enough contrast for it to actually lock focus. Fuji does do a good job of indicating to you whether or not the autofocus has failed. You'll either get a green box or a red box whether or not focus has been locked. So I've just always made sure that I wait for that red box, but even more so recently, I've just ended up opting to use the manual focus with this lens, which sort of sucks because I bought this to have the autofocus, but for video, it works phenomenal when it comes to autofocus. What I would recommend using is this 12 millimeter F2 from Samyang. It's a manual focus lens and this has honestly been one of my little workhorses. And the only reason why I ended up switching from this to this is because of the way the aperture functions. When I take photos, it would give me a little bit of a star pattern with the Samyang as to where I don't get that same star pattern when facing lights. So it's just a little minute difference. Some agents don't notice it. Some agents are like, hey, why is the lights got that star pattern? I don't like that. So it's going to be one of those things that you just have to decide, you know, this is 250 bucks, this is a thousand bucks. So I think that for the price, if you're just starting out with Fuji, the Samyang lens is definitely worth it. But if you want something that's a little bit cleaner and more OEM, then obviously go for the 10 to 24. All right, so that's it that I have really with the gripes. Now, I did end up buying the Fuji XS10, you know, halfway through the year. Now, I've had an X-T3 for a while, and if you watch any of my live streams, all of my live streams are done with the Fuji X-T3. And I feel like that camera has been an absolute complete workhorse. And I've been really, really happy with it. Now, when I first started out with Fuji this year, I started out filming video. All my real estate videos were 4K 60, slowed down to 4K 24. And a lot of people ask me, well, how is this with overheating? And me personally, I never experienced any issues with overheating. Again, filming real estate, I'm filming smaller, shorter clips, so I never really noticed any problems. Partially, I think a quarter of the way through the year, Fuji ended up pushing out an update that allowed this camera to basically bypass that overheating issue, and there was definitely no problems. Even outside filming in 4K 60, it worked perfectly fine. However, it's 4K 60 isn't something you're going to want to film in continuously. The vast majority of my videos are 4K 30 and 4K 24, so I never really butted up against any of those problems that others were talking about in the earlier days of the Fuji X-T4 release. With the Fuji X-S10, it's a different story as it doesn't offer 4K 60, it maxes out at 4K 30, which most of my vlogs are filmed at 4K 30 frames per second in the classic Chrome film simulation and I'm really enjoying filming on this for my vlogs. I stopped filming with the X-T4 primarily due to low light capability in houses. It struggles a little bit and using F-Log we would get a little bit of noise. Bumping it into Eterna helped clean it up a little bit, but I always felt that still the X-T4 struggled just a little bit in video department. So I ended up switching to the Panasonic S5 for my studio and videos on the houses and I haven't really looked back yet. I'm going to talk about that camera in a different video, but for vlogging, I use the Fuji X-S10. Now this is an 8-bit internal camera, meaning that it can only record in 8-bit color internally, but if you hook it up to a Ninja Atomos, you're going to get that 10-bit color and honestly, I feel like this is a little bit more of a traditional camera. I like this camera but I like this camera for video. For photos, I still really miss these dials. These dials on the Fuji X-T4 and X-T3 are a lifesaver if you're a real estate photographer. If you haven't seen the video where I talk about the X-T3 and X-T4 for photos for real estate, go ahead and check out that video because these dials make all the world of a difference. But with the X-S10, I feel like it is more of a simplistic camera. It's more geared towards video. Right up at the top, you have a video dial, pretty super simple, and you can control your ISO and shutter directly from some of the custom buttons here, which makes this a really a no-brainer shoot. Again, I use the classic Chrome film simulation on this camera, which I think gives me really solid color. 
and the autofocus actually seems to work a little bit better on the XS10 than it does on the X-T4. I don't know why that is, but it seemingly does. Also, Fuji has improved the IBIS on this camera, which I notice a lot less wobble. Even using the 10 to 24 to vlog, I notice a lot less IBIS wobble on the XS10 than I have on the X-T4. So that is an absolute plus. One of the things that I, I wished Sony would have had when I was vlogging with them was these flip screens that came out to the side. They only added those to the, their new cameras after I left, but I love having the flip screen so I can see if I'm in focus. It just makes a world of a difference. And when I'm behind the camera, having that very angle makes it a lot easier to capture whatever it is that I'm doing. Plus, it is a great way to protect your screen when you are in transit. All in all, I really love the XS10. I don't shoot very many photos with it. However, I did snag some photos on my most recent trip with my daughter, and I think they came out great out of the XS10. But I did put this little grip here. This allows me to mount it to a tripod and also gives me just a little bit more wiggle room for the grip. I feel like the grip on this camera is really excellent. All right, let's talk about battery life. Now, battery life between both of these cameras are strikingly different. On the X-T4, you have a much bigger, more robust battery, which lasts me quite a bit of shoots. I can typically do two to three houses before I have to pop in a new battery. Now that's also doing multi-brackets, which are gonna be taking more photos than just your traditional single bracket. On the XS10, it's a little bit different story as they opted to use one of the older batteries, which I have mixed feelings on, but honestly, if I'm just vlogging, I try to limit my clips to like five minutes or so. I can typically make it through a half a day of use before I need to pop in a new battery. These X-T3 batteries are a little bit more widely available, so they're also cheaper. And this is actually an aftermarket battery, and I don't really notice any difference in using these versus the standard Fuji batteries. For my X-T4, I do opt to use the standard Fuji batteries, which are a little bit more expensive, but I do notice work a little bit better as far as battery life goes. But either or, I, I still feel like I'm getting better battery life out of these than I did with Sony. All right, let's talk about lens options because I think that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people switch from one manufacturer to another. When I switched to Fuji, I was really nervous about the lenses. But after doing some research, I was able to find all the ranges of glass that I needed to be able to do my job. For vlogging, I started out with this 16 to 55, which I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing is a monster. It is a huge heavy glass lens. I would not recommend this for vlogging, but for portrait photography, it does absolutely amazing. The photos come out just razor sharp and you have that 16 to 55, so you have quite the range to choose from. For real estate, I opt for the 10 to 24. I feel like these give me really sharp images at the F8 to F7.1. Chromatic aberrations are at a minimum, and the lens distortion is incredibly, incredibly low. Verticals are straight. I love this lens, and it's super light. It really doesn't weigh a lot, and it pairs well with my XS10 when vlogging, but also for real estate photography, it's not really obtrusive, and it works super well. If you're on a budget, the Samyang 12 millimeter F2 lens is probably my go-to lens for when it comes to real estate photography. It's been my absolute workhorse. And uh, I've used these lenses on Sony, and now I'm using them on Fuji, and they just really work well. You can get away with a lot with this lens for an APS-C sensor, so definitely recommend this lens. But if you're somebody who wants to just get you know, nice shots, don't wanna spend a lot of money, and you wanna travel light as you possibly can, the 15 to 45 is such a surprising little lens. I bought this thing refurbished on Amazon, and it's just been a little beast. When we were up in uh, Georgia for Christmas, I took this lens with me, and honestly, I'm really surprised at the optical quality and clarity out of this lens. It just did so well, and it's so compact. You can fit so much in your bag with a lens like this, and um, for 145 bucks, you really can't go wrong. Again, 15 to 45 on the range, which still provides you a lot of focal length and the quality is really good. So definitely check this one out for 145 bucks. Alrighty, so all in all, after a whole year's worth of use with both of these cameras and the X-T3, I gotta say, I really don't have too many regrets. I do like what Sony's doing with autofocus and they have improved their color science substantially, 
but it just doesn't justify the cost. $3,800 for a camera is insane when I had two of these for less than $3,800 and was able to replace a vast majority of my Sony lenses. And honestly, nobody's ever complained that I was shooting on Fuji and I've been really happy with the quality of the photos that I'm getting out of the camera. So. I really can't complain, I'm not looking back. However, with that said, I did switch to Panasonic for video in studio just because I like Panasonic Vlog and I've been really happy with my Panasonic cameras. I have for the overhead, I have an S5 and for the main camera, I have an S5. So I think I'll probably be staying with Panasonic and Fuji, but for vlogging, for sure, I'll be using the XS10 just because of its size. I think if you're somebody who is aspiring to be a YouTube vlogger or whatever it is that you want, the XS10 is definitely my go-to choice as of right now, just because of the size and the affordability. 999 bucks and it can shoot 10-bit external if you have access to a Ninja Atmos. All right, but that's gonna do it for this video. If you're interested in any of these lenses or these little grips that I have on both of my Fujis, I'll have links down below where you can check those out for yourself. They are affiliate links and anytime you buy something from them, it does give me a kickback. So thank you for anybody who does use those and support the channel. Um, if you're interested in more Fuji content, be sure to hit subscribe. I'm gonna be doing a whole sort of masterclass on real estate photography with the X-T4 because I think it's time. I don't see enough of people in real estate photography using Fuji. It's a powerful camera, despite what a lot of people say. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Stay original.